I want to welcome the Towson University alumni, faculty, staff, students, and friends to today's webinar. I'm Steve Rosenfeld, the Director of Alumni Communications and Recognition. I want to thank you for joining us for today's virtual tour of the New Science Complex with Dean David Vanko. Before we begin, I'd like to start with a few, ho few housekeeping items. This session will be recorded and will be shared with all event registrants when it is finalized. Attendees will remain muted throughout the discussion. If you have any questions, please use the chat function at the bottom right of your window, and we will ask those questions on your behalf at the end of the presentation. Please direct all your questions to everyone so that obviously everyone sees the questions. And now I'd like to introduce our presenter, Dr. David Vanko. Dr. Vanko received his BA and MA in Geology from Johns Hopkins University and his PhD from Northwestern University. He joined TU as a professor and department chair in 2001 and has been the Dean of the Fisher College of Science and Mathematics since 2010. Without further ado, please welcome Dr. David Vanko. Thanks so much, Steve. I appreciate being here and thank you everyone for joining us for uh, a virtual tour of Towson University's new science complex. I'm glad you're interested in it. Um, I have a PowerPoint presentation that I'd like to present to you. And as Steve said, if you have questions, please type them into the chat and I'll invite him to interrupt me if he sees that it's a good time to do so so that we can uh, have a little bit of a virtual conversation. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and make sure that um, you can see it OK. Can you see it OK, Steve? Yes, sir, I do. OK, good. For some reason, I have to. I've lost track of my controls for the screen, though. Hmm. Um, the end show, let me start it again. There we go. Okay, now I got my controls back. So uh, here we are, Towson University's new science complex. What I'd like to do is show you an outline of what we're going to talk about today. And first of all, I'll give you a bit of history about uh, the development of the, the, the complex. Uh, I want to spend just a little bit talking about our vision for the building. Uh, I have some photographs of the construction that took place. And then finally, I'll tour you through some of the spaces in the new science complex. So a bit of history. It goes back to the first email that I could find about this project, which was in June of 2008. Uh, this is when uh, Bob Corrette was president, Jim Clements was the provost, Kate Denniston was the associate provost, and Jack Nye was in charge of uh, facilities and planning as the, as the planner. And this is where we heard that the Smith Hall expansion and renovation project was moving up in the Univers University System of Maryland's five-year capital budget plan. And so this was the, uh, the kickoff telling us we needed to start working on the beginning of our project. And following on in this memo, it says the project scope uh, is going to be a 50,000 square foot addition to Smith Hall, which was already 220,000 square feet, and then a complete renovation of Smith Hall. So build and then renovate. And we would do that in three phases, build, occupy, renovate, move, renovate, and be done. The total project budget was about $120 million with just over $105 million earmarked for the construction. Uh, a company called EYP, Architecture and Engineering, was hired to help us develop the initial program for this building to look at what we needed, to look at where we were headed in terms of enrollment at Towson University, in terms of teaching and research in the sciences, and EYP architecture and engineering would lay out everything we needed. It turns out when they laid out everything we needed, they decided we needed more than 50,000 square feet. They decided we needed 100,000 square feet and the construction cost blossomed to over $150 million and the total project cost blossomed to over $180 million. Um, after EYP made the justification for this much larger project, the project went out for bid for an actual design, architecture 
firm to design it. And EYP didn't get that contract. Instead, Canon Design got that contract. And Canon Design was uh, hired as the building architect here in late 2012 or so. Now, what Canon Design did was they, they, they forwarded to us two conceptual designs of the addition and renovation, but they also did uh, a sort of a thought experiment. They said, well, what if instead of doing a renovation with an addition, what if we just built a brand new building? Would it be simpler? Would it be easier? Would it be less expensive? And the answers to all those questions were yes. And we were very enthusiastic about getting a new building. It turns out that Smith Hall built in 1965 just wasn't suited for modern science construction in the 21st century. Its floor to ceiling heights were too small. It was just too beyond its life for uh, uh, utility heavy science construction. So we submitted to the Board of Regents an alternative plan to build a brand new 316,000 square foot building on parking lot one along York Road. And that's the plan that eventually got approved by the Board of Regents, by the state, and that's what we commenced doing. So this diagram is a bird's eye view of the footprint of the new science complex. And um, what you see is York Road is running north-south along the right-hand edge of the picture. Uh, the 7800 building is just barely visible in the bottom, as well as the Glen Garage. And then the Glen is off to the left, to the west, and Stevens Hall is up to the north. And what we have is basically two buildings, what we call two bars, the Eastern Bar running parallel York Road, the Western Bar over here, and notice that they're angled at each other so that in between is a core area. So East Bar, Core, and West Bar. All the classroom, all the instructional classrooms, the lab classrooms and the research labs are in these bars. And then large instructional classrooms and other spaces are present in the core. And the offices for faculty and staff are mostly arrayed along the ends of the bars. Okay, so that's the general design of the building. Let's just look at the vision that we we put together for designing this building and figuring out what what it what it should do. Um, the first part of our vision is our students. We serve a diverse and highly qualified student body, and we wanted to provide the best possible facilities for student learning in the sciences. Um, the best possible facilities for student learning involve facilities that that promote interactive teaching that promote project-based instruction, hands-on research, and authentic research experiences. So you'll see spaces that we've designed that have been designed to accommodate all of these things. The building is built for collaboration. The departments aren't located apart from each other in silos. Instead, they're integrated throughout the building. There are many opportunities for interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary research and study. And part of the part of doing that is is devising neighborhoods. So for example, there's a neighborhood for cell and molecular biology that's going to be occupied not only by biologists, but by some of the forensic chemists will be working in there. There's a neighborhood for um, condensed matter physics. And of course, that'll have some physics faculty doing research in it, but also some chemistry faculty members who work on nanochemicals and nanotechnology. So the neighborhood concept. Um, there's a neighborhood for teacher preparation because the STEM teacher preparation provi providing the STEM background and pedagogical skills for both for elementary through secondary teaching uh, are located in the, in the Fisher College. Uh, Towson U Teach is our program for sec preparing secondary teachers for science and math. And so there's a STEM teacher prep neighborhood on the second floor of the building. 
another part of the vision is sustainability. And so the building will be lead silver. That's actually required by the state. Uh, we're hoping it'll be lead gold in the end and will be uh, awarded the lead gold designation. And, and an important part of the vision for the building is that it blends into the Glen and into the Glen Arboretum. We, I uh, regard the Glen as an extension of the science building, an extension for education, an extension for research. And of course, an ex it's an extension for the whole university for recreation and education. Uh, we needed to respect the iconic Stevens Hall and the TU master plan. And uh, those of you who have seen it, uh, I hope recognize that Stevens Hall is not overshadowed by the science complex. It, it actually um, integrates very nicely. And then science on display. Uh, there's a lot of glass. There's a lot of opportunity to show what's going on in the instructional labs, to show what's going on in the research labs, and to draw students into the facility and also draw the public into the facility. And we're hoping to have numerous public programs, planetarium programs, uh, observatory, uh, observing on the roof, um, Saturday morning science type programs and things like that where we bring in the public. So that's uh, a, a brief look at our vision. Let's look at some of the, the construction. This is a view from a, a construction camera on the roof of the Glen Garage, and it's looking down to the northeast onto lot one. Um, and there's a pathway here that many people would traverse going from the parking garage along this pathway up these stairs and out to Stevens Hall. And this is November of 2017. That's when we got started, starting taking down some, some trees. By January, the lot is cleared, the parking lot is still there, but we're starting to see a big hole go down into the ground. This building sets down into the ground somewhat so that we don't overshadow Stevens Hall. By February, we're removing a lot of dirt. One day, there were over 240 dump trucks of dirt who came through here, got loaded up, and took the dirt away. I asked because there was a guy on the construction site with a clicker who counted the number of trucks. I said, where are you? He said, 240. It was amazing. By March, the hole is getting down to the level that they're going to start building. Notice these bulkheads, these walls that were built um, to, to uh, keep it from falling in. And then that April, we actually had our groundbreaking. The groundbreaking took place on the roof of the Glen Garage. You can see a, a sandbox and a bunch of working stiffs with shovels and a tiger. And there's the president and, and the tiger, Doc. And there's uh, Bob Corrette, who came back for the, um, for the groundbreaking in April of 2018. By June of 2018, we're pouring cement. And most of this building is, is concrete or cement. And a lot of concrete got poured. Um, a lot of rain happened that year and the following year. So the concrete pouring got delayed a little bit. Part of the reason we're still not fully occupied. Um, but as you can see, it's a huge undertaking. By July, the building is really starting to take shape. The east bar running parallel to York Road, York Road over here. The west bar taking shape next to the Glen over here and the central core. This photograph shows something very interesting. After they pour a concrete floor, these guys would ride around on little things that looked like bumper cars. And they would ride all over this to try to flatten the concrete and make it as smooth and flat as possible. Very interesting thing to watch. Not a bad job. September, you can see the rain. <laughs> November, building taking shape and going upwards. By December, we're starting to see how the, the building is going to look on the south end here. 
January of 2019, April of 2019, July of 2019, we're putting skin on the building. And of course, this is going to get bricked over. And there it is, December of 2019. The brick facade, the skin is almost complete. So it was a couple of year project to watch this thing grow up out of the ground. And here's the finished product. Uh, two photographs, one showing the eastern bar looking from York Road. And you can see this is a five story building. So this is floor five, four, three, two, and floor one is below grade here. And this great big gray thing is actually the sixth floor. That's the penthouse. And inside the penthouse is all the mechanical, or much of the mechanical for the building. Looking at the building from the west, from the top of the Glen Garage, we see the west bar with its penthouse up at the top, the greenhouse on the south end of the west bar, um, people walking from the Glen Garage to Stevens have an option to walk outside and up a set of stairs or to enter the building and go through the center and get and come out on the third floor and go to Stevens Hall. There's a beautiful glass walled classroom here, which I call the Glen Terrace classroom or the Glen View classroom. And the, and the Glen Terrace is on top of it. And then you see some stormwater um, management features here. Well, let's look at some, some pictures from inside the building. This is an artist's uh, rendering or designer's rendering from Canon Design of what the central core of the building would look like in an area that we call the Science Commons. Kind of like the neighborhood commons, this is where you can hang out. It's public space, it's shared space. Um, you can have events here, you can study here, you can just meet people here. Uh, and just like, the, just like the, the town commons, you can graze your sheep here. No, you can't do that. Um, but here's the rendering. And the next is a photograph of exactly the same thing in the finished space. And there's the science commons in the finished space. You enter the science commons from the plaza over to 7800 on the second floor. To the right is a cafe. And then around the corner is this sort of a stadium area. There's a general grand staircase that takes you up to the third floor and out to Stevens Hall, if you wish. Or you can continue up to the fourth floor and up to the fifth floor. Another view of the Science Commons now up on the uh, fourth floor and facing south, you can see there's a uh, seating down here for the Science Cafe. There will be uh, a video display on this wall. It's not installed yet, but it'll be a five by five array of flat screen TVs that all work in tandem. There's a cool sort of a living room area here, a mezzanine that allows people to, to sit. Go, go previous to show you that again. There's the mezzanine sort of comfort, comfortable area. And then more stadium behind it. Oh, there's a good picture of it too. Um, the area at the top of the Science Commons behind this gray wall is our Student Success Center. It's kind of the old tutoring center, but it's reconfigured or redesigned as a high-tech high student success center where there will be tutoring and there will be studying and uh, other options for students to, to, to get help and to succeed. And here's a, a picture of the Science Cafe that you see on your right as you enter the building. It's a, it's a very small cafe, but it's got grab-and-go uh, sandwiches and salads. It's got coffee machines that grind the coffee just before it brews it for you. And so that's a nice thing. And everybody's welcome to come over and have coffee in my building. I'll buy you a cup of coffee if you let me know you're coming. 
one more view of the Science Commons from way up on the fifth floor. Across the way, you can see a conference room here, a teaching laboratory down here. At the north end of the building, between the second and third floor is a curved stairway and a nice wood floor down here. And this area leads into a number of large lecture halls. But what's behind this curved stairway is really cool. If you go around behind the curved stairway and in the doors, you enter the planetarium. And this is our new planetarium in the science complex. It features a very high definition uh, two projector system for projecting the stars and the planets. But it can also project a lot of other things like there's a human anatomy uh, program that allows you to project all kinds of things about the human body. And while you're sitting in the planetarium, looking up at the dome and looking at these projections, you get the feeling that you're actually inside the body um, zooming around. There are also programs that we can provide here that uh, focus on geology and tectonics and the earth. So in addition to astronomy, we can teach uh, anatomy and geology in here and, and a number of other things. You'll notice that the dome is sort of tilted forward, which makes it a little easier for people to look up and see. And we're just really excited about uh, this new planetarium. We can't wait until we start having our public programs again this fall. And after those public programs, should the sky be clear, people can ride the elevator up to the fifth floor, actually up to the sixth floor, above the fifth floor, and walk out onto the roof and over to our new observatory. And that's where our telescope that's currently in Smith Hall will be um, transferred and installed. Let's look at some of the teaching spaces. This is a typical lecture hall that has uh, fixed tables and movable chairs. And one of the things you might notice is that uh, this first row of tables and this second row of tables are on the same tier. And that means if the, uh, if the teacher asks people in the first row to turn around and talk with people in the second row, they'll be looking at each other eye to eye instead of looking up. A very simple uh, design feature that makes collaborative uh, work in a classroom like this a little easier. All of the classrooms have very sophisticated teaching stations with a Crestron system, a computer, uh, document camera, um, hearing devices for those who are hard of hearing, microphones, and cameras within the rooms so that uh, classroom classes can be, can be um, recorded or beamed live uh, digitally. This is a lecture hall with um, pedestal seats. And again, uh, two rows of seats are on the same tier. So actually every, the, 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 the forward chairs in these, ro in these tiers rotate around. And so you can sit in this chair and spin around and talk to the person behind you. You don't wanna do that while the instructor is speaking, but you wanna do that when instructed by the instructor to do so. Project-based instruction is a capability in several of our, our large classrooms. This one has uh, pods of six seats where each pod has the ability to work with their own flat screen. And there are a number of pods around the room. And uh, so this is the kind of classroom that will be um, make it capable for uh, arranging students, coordinating students in groups of up to six to work on, on projects of that size. And then another project-based instruction classroom design uses round tables with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine seats, eight or nine seats around each table. And then lots of technology around the room and each of these tables can be assigned one of these screens. Or you might say, I want this table's screen to be shown around the whole room so everybody can see it. That's easy to do. Uh, the teaching laboratories are, are very well equipped. They're 
the nicest thing is they're clean and they're spacious compared to what we have in Smith Hall. Uh, and they're, they're fresh and new, uh, very well out -quip, uh, equipped, outfitted. Notice the large windows in this lab looking out over the Glen. This is an instructional lab uh, for chemistry. And notice the large windows looking into that lab from the core of the building so that people in the core can see what's going on, uh, the science on display aspect of the instruction and the research that's going on in the building uh, next to them. This is a, a cell and molecular biology research lab, again, with nice, uh, uh, spacious, high-tech, well-endowed laboratory facilities. This building has a lot of spaces like the one you see here. Not, we ha it's not fully outfitted yet with furniture yet, but these are areas for people to hang out and to get together. There are pr uh, probably about a dozen of these um, informal gathering spaces throughout the building. And those of you who remember taking any classes in Smith Hall will know that there is virtually no place to hang out and, 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 and to interact. Instead, people sit on, the, sit on the floor in the halls of Smith Hall waiting to get into rooms, just not very, not very comfortable. But this building uh, provides a lot, of, a lot of comfort for people. At one end of the building, we have a number of little rooms that are uh, accessible with your one card. These are called huddle rooms or little meetup rooms. And anybody can make use of these rooms and they're already getting heavily used. Here's a picture inside one of the huddle rooms. Each one has two beanbag chairs and, and now we've had some furniture delivered. So each one also has a rectangular table and four, four other chairs. And there's a whiteboard and there is a uh, flat screen and anybody can use those flat screens. All you have to do is download an app called Solstice. And you can download that to your iPhone or to your laptop or to your um, Android. And it, you type in the address of that flat screen and then whatever you've got on your device projects up to the flat screen. And I've already seen students using this. Uh, the greenhouse on uh, the sixth floor on the west bar is just wonderful. It's so technologically superior to the to the um, old greenhouse in Smith Hall. It's going to be a pleasure to use. Um, in these two photographs, the, the one on the left is looking at the uh, adjacent to the building uh, on the York Road side. We have a series of eight uh, cells which are rain gardens. And on this, on the west side of the building, looking out towards the Glen, there are, there's a rain garden type feature, uh, cells that gather water. And this is standard construction in Maryland. The Maryland Department of Environment requires each new construction site to have a stormwater management plan. And uh, these are the features that were designed and engineered for our stormwater management. And so we're going to monitor these and we're going to use them as an, as an educational feature because our students, for example, in environmental science and studies, go out into the world and they design these types of features. They have to know how they work, how they need to be maintained to work properly. One of the things uh, that we had to do for this building was to take down a specimen white oak. White oak is Maryland state tree. And this particular white oak was in the way. And so we decided that we would save the white oak, that we would have it cut into boards. And we've got about 60 linear feet of bench made out of these boards. And you see a, a little short one on the right here. And when they took the tree down, I asked them to leave me a slice of the base. And we've taken that slice and we've uh, sanded it down and polyurethaned it and mounted it in this beautiful mount. And uh, this tree started growing in 1947, and it was removed in 2017, 28, 2017. It's, uh, it's got 71 rings. And so we're developing a, uh, a display for this 
tree slice. And this is a rendering of the display. There's the slice. And over here, we're going to have a history of the Glen Arboretum and two little games that kids can play having to do with the tree rings. So for example, can you find the tree ring that the tree made in the year that Neil Armstrong walked on the moon? Of course, they're gonna, I, I'm thinking like middle school kids. Oh, what year was that? Oh, 1969. So you go 1947 and you count out towards 1969. And we'll have a, a number of um, science uh, events between 1947 and now plotted out on this tree ring. And then to the left of that, there's a big blank wall. And that's where we are installing um, our donor wall to thank people who donate to the Jesson Mildred Fisher College of Science and Mathematics. And there'll be uh, a renewable display here of donors to the college, including the whole college. Remember that mathematics and computer and information sciences are part of the college. They're in the adjacent 7800 building. So, so it's donors to the whole college. And then over here, we'll have plaques for donors to the construction of the science building as well. So there's another drawing of that uh, donor wall with a scale. You can see it's going to be very nice. I think. So that is, uh, I'm going to stop sharing. That's my tour for you of the new science complex. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm really happy to answer any questions if any have come in, Steve. We had a lot of great comments to start with, uh, including very cool, great idea, beautiful, uh, great tour, amazing. However, we did have one question that I, I sort of know the answer that there actually isn't an answer yet, I don't believe. Uh, what's going to happen to Smith Hall? So Smith Hall is already uh, under consideration. A portion of it, uh, not all of it, but a large portion of it is being programmed. Remember that part one program we did at the beginning? Well, now they're doing a part one program to uh, renovate Smith Hall for mass communication and electronic media and film and to provide them modern uh, studio and communications facilities. So the old media center you know, has a radio studio, a TV studio, things like that, but their studios are like Smith Hall was very old for us. Media center is very old for EMF. And so they will be getting within the next couple of years uh, brand new facilities to serve the students in those fields. Uh, the rest of Smith Hall that extends to the north towards um, towards the Cook Library uh, may be renovated into offices, or I, I don't think they've decided yet. Because Smith Hall is big. It's too big for just one or two departments. Great. Uh, we did just have another question come in. Uh, where, are all the, where are the offices and staff areas in the new complex? So they're mostly at the um, ends of the, of the laboratory bars. So at the north end and at the south end, both, there are um, stacks of offices. And there's currently no more questions. If anyone has any more questions, please feel free to use your chat and direct your questions to everyone uh, so that I can see them and Dean Banco can see them as well. I'll give you all a moment to type. <laughs> I can say that I've seen the building in person. I'm actually planning to walk back over there today. And my goal will be once in a while to um, take my lunch with me and use one of those uh, science on display windows just to, I mean, just for the sheer pleasure of watching while I eat my lunch. I'm very excited about that uh, as a staff member. All right, we have some new questions now. Uh, will the classes start in the fall? Yes, um, there are already a couple of classes going on now. Um, actually, this is an interesting story. There's a uh, uh, Angela Cox in biology came out of one of the um, lecture halls a, a couple of weeks ago and she passed by me. She said, I just finished my class. And I said, oh, where are you teaching? She said, right in there, 20, 2233 or whatever the room number was. And I said, oh, so you're using the classrooms? And said, yeah. I said, well, um, how many people are in your class? And she said, well, I have 90. 
So this is a this is a, a core um, gen ed biology class. And I said, oh, wow. Well, how many students were in the classroom with you? And she said, three. <laughs> and I said, oh, that's interesting. Well, how many students were online? And she said, there are about 50 online. So she was teaching to three students in the class who were here on campus and 50 students who were in real time online. And remember, there's no 70, not 90, 70, there's 70 in the class. And I said, hmm, 53 out of 70, that's pretty good attendance for a biology class. <laughs> but so that's what's going on now. Just a couple of the rooms are being used and only a few, you know, there's about a thousand students on campus, but, but not many. Uh, we expect uh, our fall to be fully face-to-face uh, -face, and we expect all of the, all of the classes basically to be utilized in full this fall. It's gonna be a, a real step function from just a trickle now to a flood come August 30th. So, but we'll be ready for them. Uh, speaking of being ready, this was an interesting question. How do you manage hiring facility staff for such an impressive building? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, you, we have a whole list of facility staff that we that we are expecting to hire. Um, when you go from 220,000 square feet to 320,000 square feet, you can't expect your laboratory managers and other facility staff to take on all that extra um, real estate without help. And so uh, new staff have been programmed all along and we're slowly starting to, to um, get authorization to advertise and to add some of those new staff. The one staff member that we have a current search for is a, a building manager or coordinator. This would some, be someone in my office who is, is basically the, um, I don't know, the chief of the building to help um, organize and, and manipulate all of the users and, and to work as a liaison with facilities with um, environmental health and safety, with the police, with um, administration and finance and all that. So we, we have another four to five positions that we hope to hire within this first year to get, to get uh, fully hired out. Great, uh, another question was, uh, is it very impressive? Will there be an opportunity for an in-person tour for alumni? Um, I can answer part of that, but I'll let you. So, we, so as an alum, today is actually my first day back in the office. As you can see, uh, obviously, my, my lighting is terrible. I need to turn my computer around. Um, but uh, so we're, we're really hoping to do a lot more in-person uh, events and, and tours potentially, hopefully in the fall, as soon as Dean Banco is ready for us. We'll schedule some, um, some events in that building because, again, I, I can't tell you how spectacular it is to see it in person. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm happy to give tours. Um, other people will be happy too, but I'm happy to give tours just about uh, to anyone. Um, like I said, if you want to stop by and you're in the area and I'm free, I'll buy you a, a cup of coffee or a soda or something and just happy to do that. And I want to have events in here too. It's going to be a great event space. If you all have events that you want to hold, uh, like the the, the Glenview classroom would be a great place for a Saturday workshop. If one of you has at your job or your, your firm a need for, for a retreat or a workshop or something like that, and you're looking for space, um, talk to us and talk to events and conference services, and uh, we, can, we, can, we can probably host you. Another question, uh, is the computer science department in the science complex building? No, the computer and information sciences uh, and mathematics are the two Fisher College departments that are just across the plaza in the 7800 building. And so what's what's really great about one of the things that's great is that we are now together. It's a short hop to, to for me to go over to there or for them to come over here. Unlike when we were in Smith Hall, we were separated by you know a fairly long walk. And um, already people from math and computer science are coming over and I see them sitting in the science commons talking. I see them having coffee. Um, so it's really nice to be 
more uh, uh, relatable to each other physically. Another question, uh, did you move everything from, this, from Smith Hall to this new building or are you going to get new equipment? So we're getting a lot of new equipment. Um, because when you get a capital budget for a new science building, the state does provide uh, a fairly generous sum for new equipment. So that made us do a very careful inventory of everything in Smith Hall and made us decide, you know, does this go with us or do we replace it um, using some of that budget for new equipment? And so there are certain things that Obviously, we're going to bring over um, our brand new scanning electron microscope. You're not going to abandon that. Um, our relatively new nuclear magnetic resonance instrument in chemistry, that's coming over. Um, many of the spectrophotometers and, and other equipment is coming over. Some of it has to be moved by specialists, others we can move ourselves. But then there, there is equipment that um, we're kissing goodbye. You know, you're so close to the end of your life or beyond the end of your life that we're taking this opportunity to replace you. And so there's going to be a, a lot of things like that abandoned in Smith Hall. Um, many of many of them well deserving of being abandoned. <laughs> well, I believe that is the last question. Um, Dean Banker, do you have any final words of wisdom for us? Well, I don't have any words of wisdom. No, that's a little little much to expect. But <laughs> I am uh, I'm really happy to be here. And and like I said at the outset, I'm so happy that there are alumni who are interested in our project and who are interested in coming and visiting. And I look forward to seeing you uh, at some event in the near future. I, I do want to thank you as well very much for being here. This is just, I mean, I, I guess I've, I've seen it in person, but hearing you talk about it again uh, and seeing the renderings and some of the live photos, it's been fantastic. I do hope everyone enjoyed this peek inside this new magnificent building. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to thank Sarah Mesker from University Advancement for helping me coordinate this session. Uh, in addition, we have lots more alumni events coming up, both virtual and in person. Uh, on May 24th, we'll host a virtual olive oil history and tasting webinar led by a TU alum and a TU professor. And on June 12th, we'll host an in-person TU alumni night at Bassignani Winery in Sparks, Maryland. You can register and learn more about these and other events at alumni.towson.edu. We also want to ask that you follow the Towson University Alumni Association on our social media channels and on Tiger Connect, our alumni community. These details are posted on the screen now Again, we want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vanko, and I will hopefully see you very soon. Take care, everyone. My pleasure. Thank you.